every few years a product comes along that has a potential to revolutionize the world. Can we imagine living in a world without rubber or glass or steel? In the 1950s, we developed silicon, which is the backbone of all modern electronics. Around that same time, we saw plastics being used in almost everything. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Plastics. More recently, we've seen things like carbon fiber, Kevlar, and graphene. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about one of the most exciting materials to come along in decades, and you won't believe the potential that it has. It's stronger than steel, it's lighter than steel, it's cheaper to manufacture than steel, and it's called superwood. Humans have been using wood for thousands of years to do all sorts of things like providing fuel, heat, shelter, transportation, furniture, and almost everything else. Trees cover the planet. It's one of the most versatile and abundant materials out there. But when you look at a piece of wood, it doesn't look all that impressive. It looks ordinary. Well, there's a company out there that is taking wood like this from something ordinary and transforming it into something truly extraordinary, and it's called superwood. Now, there have been a lot of advancements in building technology recently involving wood, including what's called mass timber construction. This is where they take thin layers of wood and sandwich them together to create strong wooden beams that are resistant to fire, rot, and decay. They're also building skyscrapers out of the stuff, including this 25-story or 284-foot tower in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Superwood is not mass timber. It's something else entirely, and it represents a new leap forward. So what is it and how is it made? Well, it's wood, but it's wood that's gone through a chemical process as well as a physical process to change it. To understand how it works, we need to talk about what wood really is. So wood is made up of a few different substances. The first and most abundant is something called cellulose, which makes up about 40 to 50% of wood and that, of course, will vary depending upon a number of factors, including uh, the species and growing conditions, among other things. Cellulose is essentially the fibers of wood and is made up of glucose, which is a sugar, and at a molecular level is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Cellulose give trees their structure and provide strength and rigidity. Next, there's a material called hemicellulose, which makes up about 20 to 30 percent of wood. It's similar to cellulose, but it's made of other sugars and not just glucose. It also gives structure to wood and helps bind cellulose fibers together. Then there's a material called lignin, which makes up about 15 to 30% of wood. Lignin acts as a binder. It binds all of the wood fibers together and also gives wood rigidity and resistance to decay. Then lastly, there are what are called extractives. These are resins, oils, tannins, and other organic compounds that influence color, scent, and resistance to pests, and usually makes up about 1-5% to 5 of wood. And again, the exact material or substance varies depending upon the species of wood. There is, of course, water in wood, which is stored mostly in the cellulose fibers, but that starts to leak out and evaporate the moment that the tree is cut, and the percentage of water in wood will vary with a number of factors, including how long it's been since it was cut, or the relative humidity in the air around it. There are also trace amounts of various minerals in wood. All right, so now that we've uh, nerded out a little bit and we understand what makes up wood, let's talk about how super wood is made. But before we do that, I do wanna talk about this video's sponsor, Tecovis. Tecovis is a company that makes amazing boots, both work boots and Western boots. And I've got a pair of each and I think they're both fantastic. And recently I got these cowboy boots for my wife. She loves them and they look great. The great thing about these boots is that they're comfortable right out of the box. You can tell that they're very well made. The leather quality is fantastic, and they have a ton of different styles to choose from. The work boots are also great because of features like the composite safety toe for protection. They're also waterproof and have other safety features like being oil and slip resistant. Tacova's boots are handmade and use premium leather, and I'm sure that these are going to last for years. So if you're in the market for a new pair of boots, check out Tacova's. You can click on the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen to get your new favorite pair of boots today. And like I say, they make both fantastic work boots and great Western boots, and so there's a lot to choose from. Tecovis has been a really great partner for the channel, and I really love working with them, and I love their boots. So again, check out the link in my description or the QR code on screen, and thanks again to Tecovis for sponsoring this video. All right, so back to Superwood and how it's made. 
So superwood is made in a two-step process. The first step is chemical, and the second step is physical. In the first step, they boil the wood in a solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide, which is a chemical treatment similar to the first step in creating the wood pulp used to make paper. This partially removes the lignin and hemicellulose, but it largely leaves the wood's cellulose intact. Once that step is complete, the treated wood is then compressed until its cell walls collapse. The compression continues while the wood is gently heated and the pressure and heat together encourage the formation of chemical bonds between large numbers of hydrogen atoms and neighboring atoms in adjacent nanofibers of cellulose. And that greatly strengthens the material. After it's gone through that process, it becomes about a fifth the size of the original piece of wood. Also, its resistance to being ripped apart increases by more than 10 times. It becomes 50 times more resistant to compression and almost 20 times stiffer than the original untreated wood. So what does that all mean in terms of its strength overall? Well, according to the researchers at the University of Maryland who first discovered the process, it's about two times stronger than steel. They've even done ballistics tests and were able to stop bullets fired into it when it was stacked like plywood five layers thick. It didn't perform as well as Kevlar, but it's also about 5% the cost of Kevlar. Added to that is that it is about 80% lighter than steel and it's, it costs about half the cost of steel to manufacture. So I wanna pause here for just a moment and I wanna ask what you think. Does this all sound too good to be true? What kind of uses do you see for a product like this? Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Now you may say, Dave, this is all theoretical and can't really be done at scale, but you have to understand that Superwood is actually not new. In fact, here's an interview that was done with a lead researcher, a guy named Liang Bing Hu back in February of 2018. That's over seven years ago. Well, interesting in replacing steel and the carbon fibers by strong uh, wood structures. So you can be, uh, they can be lightweight uh, strong and uh, low cost. So the reason that I'm talking about this now is because they're actually going to do it. The researchers at the University of Maryland have actually started a company called Inventwood and they've secured over 50 million dollars in startup capital including 20 million dollars from the US Department of Energy and they're going to start manufacturing superwood this summer. That's really exciting. Now they haven't gone into a lot of detail on the specific products they're going to manufacture first but looking at their promotional materials, it looks like they're going to start with durable facades and structural beams, which I think could actually be a great start. If they can build structural beams that are stronger and cheaper than steel, and frankly look better than steel, then they're going to have an immediate market in building construction. So I started off the video talking about revolutionary products like rubber and plastics and carbon fiber. And if all this material can do is structural beams, then it wouldn't be all that impressive. But it's really so much more than that. This material opens up all sorts of doors. For example, uh, car manufacturers, they're always trying to save weight on their vehicles by switching from you know, regular steel to high strength steel or aluminum alloys or carbon fiber composites. Now each of those materials has pros and cons, but one thing they all have in common is that they're often expensive and or difficult to manufacture. Not to mention supply chains that rely upon foreign governments that may not be all that friendly. Superwood, on the other hand, is relatively simple to manufacture. And one of the great things is that it can actually be molded early in the process to nearly any shape, similar to how car parts are stamped out. And that's in the, the time where they're, they're compressing the wood. This means that we could see cars manufactured with strong and lightweight superwood bodies. Other things like windmills and skyscrapers, even homes, recreational vehicles, all sorts of things could be manufactured with superwood. You could live in a home that is entirely made of superwood from the internal structural components to the exterior facade. Another incredible thing about superwood is that it has a class A fire rating, which is fire resistant as brick, concrete, and stone. And I could see a material like this working really well in areas of you know, Southern California as they rebuild from fires that they had earlier this year, or in areas where you want to have an exterior facade that looks nice, that is pleasing, but is also very fire resistant. Another really fascinating thing is that they're also experimenting with making a kind of glass out of wood. If you remove all of the lignin from wood, you can make the wood transparent. 
and they've been experimenting in combining that transparent wood with polymers similar to plexiglass to create windows made from wood. Now, I think there's still a ways off on that, but that's, again, something incredible that they can do with wood. It, it kind of boggles the mind all of the things that you can do with wood, but remember, microchips are just sand or silicon that's been taken through some very specific processes to make it work the way that it does. So why does wood have to be any different? In fact, I made a video a few years ago about a company that was making satellites out of wood. They were using plywood and the satellites were very small, but you could theoretically build large, strong and lightweight satellites out of superwood. The possibilities are really endless and it's amazing that a space age material is coming from something as ordinary and terrestrial as a tree. But that brings up another point. It does come from a tree after all, and as we know, deforestation can be a really big problem around the world. So could a material like this uh, lead to increased deforestation? Well, I don't think so, for a few very specific reasons. Now, a lot of the deforestation around the world is not about harvesting trees. In the Brazilian Amazon, for example, they oftentimes burn the trees in the rainforest and, and throw them out because it's not about the trees, it's about the land, specifically land for cattle to graze on. Today, most tree harvesting, especially in places like Europe and the US and Canada, is done sustainably and can be managed in a way that does not destroy the environment. A couple of other points to consider is that uh, wood stores carbon, meaning that it can take carbon from the atmosphere and lock it in, lock it into that product. The production of steel and many other materials like that are dirty and they only release more carbon, they don't sequester anything. Also, a product like this could lead to a stronger domestic logging industry and could revitalize communities and bring back jobs in areas where they've been lost. It's definitely something to watch for. So you can probably tell that I'm really excited about this product and I think that it has a ton of potential. But here's the thing, they haven't really proved themselves yet. The question is, can they create products that will do what they say they will? Will they be able to manufacture at scale and at a price point that would make a product like this useful? Something that people would actually buy because it's competitive on price. Now is their chance to make it happen. They have the money that they need to get started and I for one really hope that they succeed. But I wanna know what you think. Would you use a super wood beam in your home? What problems do you see with a product like this? What other uses could there be? Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Also, if you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.